It applies to children in relationship to their parents, priests in relationship to those who are above them, their superiors, wives in relationship to their husbands, everything. So anytime you act contrary to that, one of the things that happens is you, become, you can become diabolically influenced. This is one of the reasons why uh, women will very often find their own interior life is much more settled, not just because it follows the order established by God, but they'll find that their in interior life is much more settled because the demons don't want to get involved with somebody who is following right order. What they're always trying to do is get you to commit mortal sin and act contrary to the authority to get, out, to get you out from underneath that so that you're not protected. So that brings up one of the first things, at least on a spiritual level, that we, you can keep track of, which is, well, two things. One, never, under any circumstances, lose your state of grace. The state of grace is your principal protection against diabolic influence. The odds of somebody becoming possessed or influenced um, in a, an extraordinary way who's in the state of grace is extremely rare. I've seen it, but it's extremely rare. The... Um, the other side of it is to so never commit a mortal sin, period. Because as soon as you commit a mortal sin, you're underneath diabolic influence. And it makes it harder and harder and harder. And the more you commit the mortal sin, the more you can become influenced. And it only takes one mortal sin, that's it, one, to become diabolically influenced in an extraordinary way. There's two kinds of influence, ordinary, like normal temptations. Everybody is subject to that. There's only one person that was not subject to that, and that's the Blessed Virgin, right? She was uh, never subject to uh, temptation. In fact, there's actually, that's why she's called uh, uh, Mother Inviolate, right? So she was never subject to temptation. But uh, the rest of us are, so we're all subject to temptation, but then there's extraordinary diabolic influence like possession, diabolic obsession, where people just can't keep their mind off of things, um, and oppression, where they start destroying the things around you, like your home, your family relationships, your work, that type of a thing. So all it takes is one moral sin to be subject to extraordinary diabolic influence. I've known people, I know a person who became possessed through a single act of pride. That's it, that's all it took. Because the pride, the pride was grave in that particular instance. Most people's pride is minor. Um, fornication, um, anything that, uh, pornography on the internet, all this stuff is stuff that I've seen people become possessed over these things. It takes just one, that's it. Now, ultimately it's up to God to determine it. Because ultimately, he's the one who has complete control. Christ has absolute control over every facet of the diabolic war or the spiritual warfare. Every single down to the minutia, he determines even the minutia. So, uh, most of the times, that means that God blocks it. Ninety-nine percent of the time, God blocks the possession, even though mortal sin, by its very nature removes you from out from underneath the protection of God and places yourself under Satan, 99% of the time God blocks the extraordinary diabolic influence. But as people commit more and more moral sins, it's becoming more and more prevalent. Okay, so never lose your state of grace and never commit moral sin, right? Which go hand in hand, of course, but the plain thing is you want to keep yourself spiritually protected. Okay. Demons can influence the body, so what this means is that all our psychological faculties, with the exception of there's a part of the intellect that's actually spiritual, it's immaterial. That's the one that has the capacity for self-reflection, that type of thing. They don't have access to that, but they do have access to everything else. Your emotions, your imagination, your memory, this is one of the reasons why you never want to commit mortal sin or commit some kind of sin, because then it sticks in your memory, and then they can use it against you. So that's one of the ways you protect yourself, is staying out of sin and not letting those things happen to you. If they have happened to you, one of the way, things you want to do is pray for healing of your memory and your imagination, things of that sort, because that will help the, uh, you not to recall those things, and it'll block the demons from being able to influence you in that regard. So they have access to these things. So what does this mean concretely? One of the things that, one of the most helpful things that can help in protecting yourself is just being aware of the fact that they can influence you, right? And how do they influence you? Well, they can act on your senses, but they don't do that too often. They can act on your, um, use your memories, but the imagination is one of the principal, uh, their, their principal ways in which they have influenced people. 